Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference. And it's a pleasure to, for me to, to give a talk at this, uh, at this conference. My name is Moyo Tara Mori Franki. I'm a first, I'm first year PhD student at the University of Yawunde One in Cameroon. Uh, here, Cameroon is in Central Africa. Here we have a reunification monument, which is the historical monument of Cameroon. We have some traditional meals of, of Cameroon. I belong to a research group whose the supervisor is Professor GJ, who received in, two, in 2018 the LGBT Foundation Award for Women Scientists in Developing World. The supervisor of my supervisor was Professor Kofane, who is received in 2014 the Kwame Nkrumah Continental Scientific Award. We have many research access in our research group. We can have some, some here. Concerning stochastic processes, we focus our research on transport of particles in terms of, of stochastic resonance. Many research papers have been published on this on stochastic resonance, and it's also in, in, as also in the subject of PhD, defended by Dr. Wadup who is currently the postdoctoral position in the University of, of Texas. Today, I will talk to you on recent research paper on stochastic resonance. It's about ghost stochastic resonance in an asymmetry drifting oscillator. The outline of this presentation is, is, is as follow. Very, very often, the dynamic of physical system is nonlinear. In physics and other science, the, a nonlinear system is the opposite of a linear system. That is the system that does not satisfy the superposition principle, which means that the output is not directly proportional to the input. For example, a nonlinear system, you have a chaotic system or biological neural system. Whether linear or not, the, we have the phenomenon of resonance in most physical systems. Resonance describes the phenomenon of increased amplitude that occurs when the frequency of a applied periodic force is equal or close to a natural frequency of the system or which it, it acts. We often observe this phenomenon in bridges. You have many kinds of resonance phenomenon, and you can cite frequency resonance, parametric resonance, or vibrational resonance. In addition, when a dynamic system excited by board and periodical external force and noise, the system can exhibit two other types of resonance, namely stochastic resonance and ghost stochastic resonance, which is the subject of our presentation today. Let us talk about these two phenomena. We start by stochastic resonance. Stochastic resonance is the amplification of weak signal at the output of nonlinear system by aging noise. This phenomenon was put forward by Roberto Benzi and Giorgio Parisi to explain the periodically recurrent high ages. Indeed, in the Benzi and Parisi model, global climate is represented by a double world potential where a minimum represents a small temperature corresponding to a large portion of the earth covered by ice. The weak modulation of the eccentricity of the earth orbit is represented by a weak periodical forcing. Short term climate fluctuation such as annual fluctuation in solar radiation are modeled by wide motion noise. If the noise is tuned so that the transition from cold to warm climate is synchronized, it could significantly improve the response of Earth's climate to the small perturbation caused by eccentricity of Earth's orbit. After its introduction, stochastic resonance have, has found many applications in many fields such as economics, electronics, or biology. Here we have the, a general shame of stochastic resonance. To have stochastic resonance at the output of the system, it is necessary that the system must be nonlinear, a nonlinear system. At the input of the system, you must have a weak signal and noise. We observe the output performance, and we talk about stochastic resonance when the output performance shows the Stochastic resonance peak at 
a critical noise intensity. But, however, if the periodical signal at the input of the system is composed to many frequency, you can have another type of stochastic resonance, namely gauss stochastic resonance. gauss stochastic resonance is, sim is simply the stochastic resonance which we observe at a frequency which doesn't exist at the input. This phenomenon was put forward by Shavo to explain how sensory neurons perceive the periodicity of complete sun. Let us present now our objectives. In this work, we want to demonstrate the phenomenon of gauss stokas resonance in an asymmetric drifting oscillator excited by a multi-frequency driving force and wide Gaussian noise. We also want to show the influence of the asymmetry parameter of the appearance of the gauss stokas resonance. Here we have our model. We consider a underdown motion of barium particle in three kinds of asymmetric potential in presence of multi-frequency, force, and additive noise. The dimensionless dynamic equation of the particle corresponding to a drifting oscillator can be described as expression one. In this expression, F of tau is the multi-frequency force, which is a biharmonic force composed to this frequency two omega zero and two omega zero. The additive noise is wide Gaussian noise with statistical property given by expression by expression two. The particle move in the asymmetric potential. Here we have the shape of asymmetric potential. Our potential is the double wall potential, which depends on the asymmetric parameter. We can observe that the asymmetric parameter controls just the left wheel of, of the potential. The right wheel is constant. And in the figure one, the asymmetric parameter controls only the depth of the left potential. In the in figure 1b, the asymmetric parameter control only the width of the left wheel, and in figure 1c, the asymmetric parameter control simultaneously the depth and width of the left wheel. We quantify the stochastic resonance by numerical calculate, calculating at the output of our system the response given by expression 6, 7, and, and 8. Let us now present our numerical result. In order to reach our objective, we first define the parameter of, of the system. We perform our numerical studies with four other range scooter algorithms for stochastic processes developed by, by Kasdan. Wide Gaussian noise is produced numerically with the Boxmuller formula. The time step is 0 0.01 and the initial velocity is, is 0. We first study the response at the output of the system as a function of noise intensity at the frequency omega zero, two omega zero, and, and three omega zero in the three kind of asymmetry potential. We can see that we have a stochastic, it's stochastic resonance peak at, the, at these three frequency. The stochastic resonance peak observed at the frequency two omega zero and three omega zero is usual stochastic resonance. But the stochastic resonance in green observed at the omega zero is just the signature of Gauss stochastic resonance in the system because the frequency omega zero is, doesn't exist at the input of the system. In order to have more information on this phenomenon in the system, we study the power spectral density of the system and displacement of the particle. We can see that the power spectral density displays the eigen frequency of the, of the system. Although the power spectral density don't, dis, don't display the missing frequency, you can see that the particle evolves with the, with the frequency, with missing frequency. In order to have the information of, so on influence of asymmetry in, in the system, we plot the response uh, uh, as a function of noise intensity for several values of asymmetric parameter. And we see that there are, so, there are many values for which this goes to cast resonance occur in the system. And when we increase the asymmetry parameter, the ghost to cast resonance phenomenon disappear gradually. That is, the figure one is the case of the depth asymmetry. In the case of weight asymmetry, we, are, we have many more value for which the ghost to cast resonance occur in the system. 
this allows us to, to tell that the wheat asymmetry is more favorable to produce gross stock resonance in our system. We have done the, the same work in the case of simultaneous wheat and depth asymmetry. In conclusion, in this work, we have to we have investigate the gross stock resonance phenomenon in three kinds of asymmetry drifting oscillator driven by wide Gaussian nose and by a biharmonic force so whose frequency are a multiple, the multiple of fundamental frequency omega zero. The three, the three asymmetry are namely the depth asymmetry, weight asymmetry, and simultaneous depth and weight asymmetry system. In each asymmetry system, there exists a range of asymmetry parameters where gauss tokas resonance does occur and another range where the phenomenon becomes difficult to, to induce. So the occurrence of gauss tokas resonance is controlled by asymmetry parameter in the, in the system. By comparing the inference of three asymmetries on the response of the system, it is revealed that the weak asymmetry is the most favorable to the gauss tokas resonance phenomenon. This result are significantly for optimum design and corresponding engineering application. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, are there any questions? First of all, I'm ignorant, so that's something that I have to say for just to start with. So, but I, I'm um, I was a bit confused by one fact. So you have uh, a nonlinear system, yes. and you inject uh, a frequency which is two omega naught and uh, three omega naught. I would, exp I mean, even without noise, I would expect. Uh, to generate a signal at frequency omega naught. So in this sense, uh, I, I didn't quite understand uh, if there is something peculiar of the presence of the noise, or if it is something that you should have also without noise, because uh, when you inject the frequency on a nonlinear system, in general, if the nonlinearity is generic, you generate all possible frequencies. Although, as I said, I'm ignorant, so uh, maybe I'm even I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, in our system, the SNR for, for is uh, composed to two, you should use two frequency, two omega zero and three omega zero. If we don't have noise, we can, we can observe a amplification at omega zero. But when we add noise, okay. yes, but, but when the add noise, when we when we add nodes on the system, it amplifies the response or the output of the system. So I think it's uh, important to note that on the x-axis you have the temperature and you have a peak at a certain temperature. So I think this is the resonance effect. So of course you have a periodic response of the system, but he, like, you, you add noise, right? And then for a certain temperature, you have a very yes. strong response of the system, and that's the resonance so effect. That you have the frequencies that at a certain temperature have a high... Yeah, exactly. So although your noise comes at all frequencies, it picks the frequency of the... Yeah, okay. Any more questions? Uh, well, uh, sometimes in stochastic resonance, you estimate the performance by the signal-to-noise ratio, let's say. So you compare without the periodic signal what happens and... Yes. Sometimes we, we talk about stochastic resonance with signal-to-noise ratio. But in signal-to-noise ratio, it's when we have the, 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 S, the periodical force with one frequency. Mm -hmm. When it's composed to two frequency, it's difficult to do a signal-to-noise ratio. Because in, in the response, you can, you can observe if you want the resonance. If resonance appears and, and a, at the frequency that we want, we just, we just replace the omega in the, in the expression. But with signal to noise ratio, it's, it's difficult.
Um, I also have a question. So concerning this response, so we saw that for some temperatures you have a negative response of the system, right? So the response curve was going to lower values as the temperature zero case, I think. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So for example, here in the middle plot, you can yes. see the dip. Can you? Do we have some intuition what happens for these temperatures and what does it mean that the response is negative or mm -hmm. like a smaller than temperature zero? Indeed, we 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 we, we work with Diamond-Solis equation. So we just we just study the response as a function of noise intensity. Yes. If you if you back in this. When you see the statistical property of white Gaussian noise, yeah. we take all these um, KB, the, the parameter, the uh, temperature or intensity of the noise. Mm -hmm. So here we observe the resonance peak at a critical noise intensity. Yes, yes, okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions online? No. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then let's uh, thank all of the speakers of this session. Satya Majumda, Laura Lavaki, Nicola Levenier, and Amori Moyotala. Thank you very much.